like, these fucking guys are from Pittsburgh. <laughs> CeCe's from Brooklyn. The, the finalist for the guitar player was between him, Slash, and some other fucking monster. And yeah. You guys went with CeCe, you know. Yeah. Just, uh, just a phenomenal story. Millions of fucking records all over the world, world tours. And now, you know, this is all 86 through 92, whatever. The, 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 the heart of glam rock. Even even longer, ninety a little longer, and then all of a sudden here you are, two thousand seventeen. Well, here's the thing, you know, back in in PA, um, we we were pretty young guys when we put this band together. You know, nineteen, twenty, twenty one years old, and it, it was hard to play bars. I mean, they didn't, you know, we even if we could get in the door and play, uh, that the the generation that was frequenting bars were older. You know what I mean? They were 25, 30, 35, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, so we were appealing to kids. So that's when we, you know, we would play Maryland because the drinking age was only 18 in Maryland at the time. So we did a lot of shows in Maryland. But then we're like, well, we can't just play those same couple of clubs over and over again. So we started to rent v v a blah, let me try this in English, VFW halls, skating rinks, promote our own concerts. You know what I mean? And it would be all ages. And we, you know, and then we finally, I mean, we had just done everything that we could do back there. Out here was where hard rock was happening. It was where Motley Crue, Rat, uh, Keel, I mean, all those bands were, you know what I'm saying? And so it, it made sense to come here. It made sense to come here. New York was not fertile for it. That was still wrapped up in the whole new wave scene, which was fine. That's just not what we were doing. And uh, Philly was like vocal bands, and it really wasn't a rock scene too much. I mean, arguably, Cinderella came out of there, but um, but out here was where we needed to be. And so we moved out here in March of 84. I mean, we had like 2500 bucks between the four of us. And we just came out and went for it. We are figuring if we're going to sleep on the sidewalk, at least it'll be warm. <laughs> <laughs> and then one guy couldn't take it the guitar player said he'd go yeah back. he got his girl knocked up and you know it just wasn't his uh, it just wasn't gelling all the way you know what I mean like he he's a super good guy I talked to him once in a great while um and he a really great guitar player and, and I mean he went through all those clubs with us in the early days and really helped Poison be what it is but um invariably it just wasn't the life for him he did not like the late nights and i mean we loved to party you know what i mean i mean we we were just all up in it we loved to go out every single night party till two in the morning come back change into a pair of jeans and then go out and put flyers up all over town and then sleep till noon and then rehearse and then do the same thing over again and that's what we did. We just worked. Work, this work, was work, once work, you got work, to L.A. or when you were still in when Pennsylvania? We, well, in Pennsylvania, we did. We had jobs back in Pennsylvania. Out here, we made this our full-time job. We did dumb shit like sell pencils for, you know, and oh, stuff. On the phone. Yeah, 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 on the yeah, phone. Yeah, I did stuff. all that but, shit, yeah. But, uh, but as far as, like, I mean, we just made it our full-time. And then we'd go to, like, Covina, West Covina and places like that and play cover songs. We were a band that were it, we were reared on playing cover songs. You have to do that back east. And then you slip in some original material. Out here, it is an original circuit. You come out, you play all original material. So we're like, how are we going to make money? So we go to the outskirts of Los Angeles or d even different like Arizona and, and play bars that we could play cover songs, just what we did in PA. And we'd make money that way. And then we'd put it back into our flyers and, and our promotion. And, you know, uh, we worked really, really, really hard. I mean, we were like the kind of guys that um, if we all worked at the same restaurant, we would have owned it in a couple of years. I mean, we just had it hair up our ass. We were on fire, you know, and we were determined, really, really, really determined. What was the first club you got into here? On the uh, the first place we ever played was Madame Wong's West. That's not there no more. It's not there anymore. It's gone. Yeah. And who? And like you, you. It was you guys, Motley Crue. Who was, well, who was, Motley Crue was already, already signed. They had huge. played the U Us Festival. I mean, they were well on their way. They were a couple albums in by the time oh, we, right. we ever Motley got out. Motley Crue here. did do Us because Shot with the Devil came out in 83, 84. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We moved out right. here in March of 84. <clears throat> so, yeah, they they definitely had uh, were ahead. 
of of us and uh, and Rat. And when we got here, they said, you know, it, it it was like, you know, we were being told that that music is getting really, really, really heavy. That's where it's going. And if we were going to do anything, we had to go really heavy. And we weren't. We were a rock and roll band. I mean, we were like part Aerosmith, part Van Halen, part Kiss, part, you know, whatever. You know, we had all those roots, and, and we liked playing rock and roll songs. What were your not, influences growing up? So Bands. much stuff. God, so much stuff. I mean, everything from, from Zeppelin to Motha Hoople to everything in between. My first Fucking concert, my first concert, believe it or not, was Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass, all right, at the Allentown Fair. Um, so I love all kinds of music, you know, and my dad was a trumpet player. My mom loved Elvis, you know, my sister was a hippie. She was nine years older than me, so she had Grateful Dead going, and here I came along, you know what I mean? My first record that I ever bought was Deep Purple, Made in Japan, oh. you know, and still to this day, Highway Star and all yeah, those songs yeah, are just, yeah, and yeah, Ian yeah. Pace is this fucking... I mean, what a drummer. <laughs> Come on, man. And he fucking... still fucking just takes it to fucking China. We were just... Uh, who, somebody was on here and we were just did the... When they got back together, that video. Oh, yeah. Da -da 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 I forget what the name of the song was. I'll tell when you what. Deep Purple got back to you? Yeah, something. They did something recently. Not recently, uh, a couple of years back. You know, I feel guilty because I have not kept up with Deep Purple, but I saw Deep Purple at the uh, Farm Show Arena in Harrisburg, and Tommy Bolin was playing guitar for them. It's when uh, Blackmore left, and Tommy Bolin, who was fucking phenomenal amazing. phenomenal phenomenal i mean just another level i gotta uh, tell you something fucking richie blackmore has always given me the fucking creeps i can't lie to you he he gives me and i've seen him i saw him i think twice i saw him in 82 when rainbow did the scorpions uh breakout blackout yeah yeah, that yeah. Fucking blackout thing. yeah i saw i saw that tour and i saw that tour. i saw that tour with judas priest uh, no yeah, shit. Crocus, yeah. Because I saw them. Awesome. It was the Scorpions and them, uh, Rainbow, with uh, Joe Lynn Turner, who was really Joe Linguido yeah. from Cliffside Park, New Jersey. Yes. It's so fucking Joe funny. Joe Lynn Turner's a hell of a singer, though, dude. You know, he's, he's still like, out there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's still he's, fucking doing it. I mean, but did you see what Richie Blackmore looks like now? I haven't, I haven't seen him. You know what? I, I, I've never wanted to meet him because I've heard stuff about right, it that right. he, was. he was so i'm like i don't even you know i don't try to meet people anymore because i've been let down a few times and i just don't even want to bother if somebody wants to say hi to me i'm open i'm really an easy guy to get along with but i people have left me down man you know and i just so i just uh like people you looked up to you saw yeah. over the years you went up to it. earlier we were talking about jujitsu people versus musicians musicians, musicians drive me nuts jujitsu people are solid <laughs> you know so if somebody's a musician and a jujitsu person, they're usually fairly solid because the jujitsu part takes over that asshole musician part. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.